Hey, it's great to be with you again today. Um, I've been reading some scripture over the last couple of days, and one of the things that has been sticking in my mind lately, and we've been talking about it at church, and uh, a couple different people I've talked to have been feeling the same thing, that the Holy Spirit is alive and active and doing awesome things in our midst. And uh, at our church, the Holy Spirit is moving and shaping and changing people's lives and is involved in so many of the ministries that we're doing and, and just going out and working in our community. And, um, but I think we need to hear this. In many places, the Holy Spirit kind of gets like put on the back burner. He kind of gets delegated to like the third wheel. You know, there's God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and then, oh yeah, the Holy Spirit. And I, I need us to hear this. We need to rely on the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in us and work in us and empower us. Uh, we get gifts from the Spirit, right? And then we utilize those gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us that manifest in us. And then we go out and through the power of God, through the Holy Spirit, we are doing things that are awesome. And let me, let me use this as the whole premise for why I believe this. The disciples had spent three years with Jesus. They heard him talk. They saw him perform miracles. They saw him uh, heal the blind and the sick and the lame and the deaf, right? They've seen him cast demons out. They've seen him raise people from the dead. They've seen all that stuff. Oh, yeah, uh, that's just the healing, right? Then they've seen him walk on water and calm winds and storms. They've uh, seen him feed 5,000 and then uh, feed another 4,000. They've seen him cast out demons. They've seen him do incredible works. And yet, when it came time, the night he's on uh, the Mount of Olives, they come and they arrest him and all of the disciples run away. Peter denies him three times. They have spent the last three years of their life, they've seen him do incredible things, and yet they are so fearful that they run away. They've been in the presence of Jesus, the Son of God. Peter called him the Messiah, the Christ, and yet fearful and run in the face of danger. Jesus resurrection of the dead, gets with the disciples and says, here's the deal. I want you to go to Jerusalem and I want you to hang out. And when the Holy Spirit comes, it's going to be awesome. I promise you. And so the disciples go and they're hiding out in the room. And there's more than just the 12, right? There's, there's all these other, there's like maybe up to 120 people in Jerusalem waiting. And on the day of Pentecost, what sounds like a roaring wind comes through the streets of Jerusalem. It, it's so loud, people come out into the streets. And then what look like tongues of fire come and rest on the disciples. And they start to speak in tongues. And they go out in the streets, and Peter delivers a sermon of all sermons. People from all over the world are in Jerusalem for Passover. They hear their uh, message of uh, the good news of Jesus Christ in their own language because the disciples are all speaking in languages that they don't know. The Spirit is working through them, and then the, through the Spirit working through Peter, 5,000 people accept Christ. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable, right? Um, incredible that the Holy Spirit could do such a thing. So as we go through our lives, we need to invest and ask the Spirit to come into our lives and work through us. Because when we invite the Spirit in, the power that He gives us is incredible. And we can do more than we can ever do on our own. May God continue to pour out His grace, mercy, and blessings on each and every one of us until we get to meet again. Amen? Amen.